Listen and subscribe to the Growth Craft Startup Community Podcast on all the major podcast players, including iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere where podcasts are available. And leave a five-star review if you like it. We need those reviews to grow the show, and it's the easiest way to help us grow the show that you can do right now. So head on over to iTunes, head on over to Google Podcasts or Spotify, and leave a five-star review for the Growth Craft Startup Community Podcast. And tell all of your friends who are entrepreneurs to take a listen. And thanks. Hello. My name is Hassan Sorrells. This is Tom Living. What's up, everyone? And you are listening and watching uh, the Growth Craft Podcast. Uh, the Growth Craft Podcast is designed with the startup founder in mind. This podcast is committed to growing your connections to our Growth Craft advisors, increasing your engagement as a listener with the Growth Craft community, and we are committed to growing your knowledge about all of the benefits uh, that Growth Craft can provide for your startup project today and in the future. And of course, we can't wait to bring you along on our journey today. Now, here on the podcast, we interview startup founders, advisors, and others about their journey, their process, their project, and of course, where they are going, even if they may not know where they are going right here at the beginning. And today, I'd like to welcome to the podcast, we'd like to welcome to the podcast, Nick Salvatore. How are you doing, Nick? I'm doing great. Thank you guys for having me. Awesome. So Don't thank, don't thank us yet. We just got started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might have been thanking us at the end of this, at the end of the episode here. Um, but um, for our listeners, um, talk with us a little bit about what it is that you do exactly. Sure. So I had been stirring with an idea for a couple of years now, um, and as of November, I started getting a little bit serious uh, after listening to a lot of podcasters and uh, startup experts say, you know quit planning so much uh, and just get out there in the world and start doing things. Um, so I developed something called a community cup uh, and community cup is um, more or less we facilitate in-person connections. Um, you know, I guess you could think of us as a little bit of referral networking, but um, the idea is to get people away from the status quo of always going to online first virtual only kind of interactions. And let's get people back outside again, meeting each other, getting to know interesting people. Um, you know, there's a ton of people out there in the world, but how do you know someone that isn't going to change your life or make your life better um, just around the corner in your neighborhood? Um, so the idea is to kind of facilitate those in-person connections. Um, and the second piece of it is that we're going to support local businesses at the same time, driving local connections to their local coffee shops, cafes, um, you know, versus something like a Starbucks or a chain restaurant, even though we all love, you know, your Red Robins and things like that. It's funny. It, it, I, I actually, I, I actually chuckled inside my head. I'm trying not to, I was trying not to chuckle out loud. No, please chuckle. When you, when you called the virtual quote unquote status quo, cause that's relatively new, right? Like it wasn't, yeah. it, it, you know, I would say essentially COVID launched us into this. What we consider the new norm now is everybody going to virtual first and we're losing the, as a matter of fact, I mean, hey, son and I were laughing uh, a couple of weeks ago. I was telling him about a dream I had that I was teaching a class on in-person <laughs> etiquette, like how to how to shake somebody's hand because people oh, forgot yeah. how to shake hands. So you're essentially doing that in real life, which I think is amazing. So tell us what what was part of the reasoning behind launching this? I know you said you had this thought and it took a little while and you said, I'm just going to do it. But what, like, what made you think of this? What was the reasoning behind like, I got to do this now? Honestly, it, it, it COVID was, you're not wrong in that COVID was certainly a catalyst for this. Um, I feel like we were virtual for a while. There's a lot of heavy digital social kind of brought that in. COVID doubled down on it and made it worse. But honestly, where the idea started kicking off for me was when I started seeing that people were allowed back outside again. Um, we were getting back to 
quote unquote, the norm, whatever you thought of as the norm. Um, it wasn't pandemic so much anymore. It, you know, it, things were getting back to normal, I guess. And I was still seeing that people weren't as much into meeting in person, even somebody right down the, the road, I would find, meet them on LinkedIn, whatever they didn't want to meet up. Um, they'd rather do virtual uh, hangouts. I'm a big fan of using meetup. I don't like the platform as much, but meetup, great way to meet people. And it was just always switching things to virtual or in-person meetings were always canceled last minute because they couldn't get people to come out. And it started confusing me a little bit, you know, what are we missing here and why can't we just pull ourselves out of, you know, being at home? And, and I'm not, you know, I definitely fall into that a lot. You know, I, I see my own mistakes that I make. It's scary to get back out. It's, it's not as comfortable meeting people in person. Um, but how do we get people to kind of get back to that norm? And the other piece of it was, you know, I come from, I'm in the Philly suburbs, but I used to live in Philadelphia about 10 years. And even after people were back outside and eating at restaurants and eating at uh, coffee shops and drinking at coffee shops, the craziest thing was some of the best coffee shops, great atmosphere, food, coffee, they just couldn't manage to stay open. And for me, that was just another lesson in, you know, how difficult it is for small business owners to run these places. Like they can do so much that they, they can at their own, you know, um, do as much as they can to make it happen. And it could still fail. You're, you're on the wrong block. There's a competitor nearby. There's a Starbucks. There's so many things working against them. And I kind of tried to marry those two together. You know, how do we join people together, but also support local? Um, so so it, it, I feel like a lot of people are feeling this, so it's not new. You know, I talk to a ton of people who say the same thing. Like, I would love to meet people again. I feel like the next generation who grew up in the pandemic won't know what it means to like interact in person. Um, <laughs> But who knows? I, ho I hope I hope I'm just overthinking it. It's my it, dream about teaching a class. On how to this is game. this is this is this is Tom's nightmare. You you are basically <laughs> saying Tom's nightmare out loud. Yeah. But a nightmare could mean you know business. It could mean uh you know getting more good. students. It's good. Business is it good. Could. It could also be a, just a daymare, right? Like it just you know like it, yes. it yeah. could just be that too. A um, couple of different things here that occur to me as you're talking. Sure. Um, you are definitely, and, and you know, we've had a couple of other founders on our podcast, um, Daniel Zuby, um, who um, was uh, was putting together um, or is putting together a project um, focused around um, basically, you know, pulling apart cars and putting them back together again so hmm. that you have shareable, a shareable vehicle sort of process. Modular, modular electric cars. Modular electric cars, right. Wow. Um, then we've also had on folks who are life coaches, right? Who are talking about um, how philosophy and mindset uh, actually helps you build a project, right? There is a thread that, that goes from electric cars and, and climate change and mindset into even what you are doing. And you're sharing this thread. And I'm listening, as I'm listening to this, I'm thinking about this. So this is the background of my question. And it's a big question. So I want you to take a moment to think about this. Sure. What you're proposing pre-pandemic probably would have worked locally really, really well um, in the world that we all remember, because we're all, we all remember the pre-pandemic world, right? Post-pandemic, to Tom's point, you seem to be fighting uphill against a particular cultural zeitgeist, <laughs> uh, to, yeah. use a, to use a Z word there that very rarely gets used, although probably more often than is necessary. You seem to be fighting a pill against a cultural zeitgeist, particularly around in, in major metropolitan areas. Mm -hmm. Now, in rural areas, or and I'm going to ask, a, I'm going to make a rural question first. In rural areas, there seems to be more of a push, or suburban areas, more of a push towards in person, whereas in urban areas, there seems to be more reticence. How is your idea, let's start with that question. How can your idea overcome that cultural, that sense of cultural sort of, is it the sense of the cultural um, pendulum has swung away from being together in person in a metropolitan area? Because you mentioned Philadelphia. How, how does your idea sort of push that pendulum back towards, towards being in person? Because you're fighting uphill against culture there too. Yeah. Join us. 
online via Zoom at the Growthcraft Startup Community Founders Forum each third Tuesday of the month at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Look, advisors and founders, we're, we're all in this together. Building relationships with your peers and entrepreneurship is just as important as connecting with experts and advisors. Each month, every third Thursday, we'll meet online via Zoom to share ideas, get support, support each other, and talk about universal issues that nearly all startups share. We'll celebrate our victories, chat about challenges, and then break out into small groups to address a timely topic of interest. It's a great way to meet like-minded entrepreneurs. Check out the links to the third Tuesday events on the Growthcraft website and join us at the Growthcraft Startup Community Founders Forum in the show notes below the podcast player you're listening to right now. For sure, fighting up again. You know, and I, I think one of the reasons why, I'll start with this, one of the reasons why I felt so motivated to get into this and build the startup was I'm somebody who I can do a decent job at a, you know, at a, at a, an employer and I'll put in the work that's needed, but if there's not some belief in the product or the service behind it, it's going to get me, you know, I'm only going to go so far. This was one of those things that I felt like was actually an urgent need for people to reconcile again. You know, we can only go so long without being able to connect on a deeper level. And one of those things is being in person, but I don't think it's not one of those things like, um, I, I sometimes compare it in importance to, um, to, to eating, to literally mm -hmm. drinking is being able to see people and socialize. Um, so I felt like this was something that um, was very urgent, but it's not like eating where you feel mm -hmm. satisfied afterwards. You know, when you drink, you feel, uh, you know, you're quenched and people feel good after seeing each other, but it doesn't hit you as much as some of those other basic needs. And I think that's why it kind of goes into the back of our head. So when I started this, I felt very passionate and I knew it was going to be an uphill battle. And I said, you know what, maybe it's going to take a while for this thing to be profitable, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, and make some revenue. Mm -hmm. That's the goal right at the end of the day. But, you know, if it's going to make the journey well worth it and meet some great people along the way, why not? Um, I am a marketer at the end of the day. I've been 12 years on the marketing side. Um, I don't think enough people give marketing credit or uh, for, for great products. And I think the product itself is king when it comes to, uh, <laughs> I'm already seeing you guys laughing, but- uh, No, go, go ahead, keep going. Once you get to the end of your <laughs> sentence, because I see Tom, Tom's again ready to wind up here, but go ahead, get to the end of your yeah, sentence. Yeah, yeah, no, so, so I would say, um, you know, I, bias, bias included, of course. Yep. I do think, you know, in the tech startup world, the product is king and getting that MVP out in the world and iterating from there and getting your product market fit. Like these are things that are king, um, but telling a good story, which people forget that's what marketing is about. Like forget the TV ads, forget social, forget influencers. Like it's telling a story. And if you can craft a well put together story, customers like getting along with that. They can be inspired to take action. Um, if you can get to the root of their problem and and connect with the audience and of course there's a lot that goes into that but it's not a monolith it's there's a lot that goes into it and i do think your question on roaring and suburban rural, sorry rural and suburban versus city i do think it is a difference in culture just in those two alone um my target demographics for right now that i'm looking at is three different segments there's your um 20 to 30 year olds who are um, supposedly deleting all of their dating apps. Um, they are, and I've been talking to a lot of people about this, they're not very excited about uh, the pressures that dating apps have. I did and just I see this on LinkedIn, me, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yes. saw this on LinkedIn and, uh, and a few other places recently. And I've been talking to a woman in Philly who runs a dating service. And she's saying, you know, people don't want the pressure. They wanna meet people in their industry or who are interesting, and then maybe something develops. Um, so that's one segment. And then the other segment, the other two segments are a little bit older. People who've kind of made their career, they're pretty successful or they're very successful. They're in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and they kind of miss those days of getting together in person. And they're not afraid to talk to people one on one. They don't need that group dynamic um, to feel comfortable. They'll go and have a conversation with anybody. And I feel like I'm 
kind of one of those people. Um, but I also skew a little bit on that younger side with the millennial group. But I think um, to kind of wrap that up, I do think it's going to come down to being able to clearly differentiate the segments and how those in rural and suburban see a service like this um, versus those in the city. And right now I am tackling just the suburbs. I'm mm -hmm. just focused on the Philly suburbs. Um, to me, Philadelphia seems like a whole nother level to connect to. But right now, what I'm getting from my surveys that I send people is they're willing to drive up to 20 minutes to meet a person. They're willing to um, explore new towns, um, have these connections in person and meet people who may or may not, you know, necessarily be a, a hundred percent match for them. It doesn't have to be a business opportunity. They just want to talk. Um, so I think that's kind of why earlier I mentioned the referral networking thing. It's kind of a little bit like that with business professionals, but you got to have an incentive. I need incentives to get people out of home because it's so easy to, oh, yeah. to just say no and sit down at your laptop. Um, oh, yeah. So I know that was a little long winded with it, but uh, I would love to jump back to the marketing piece. No, 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 no. Tom's going to jump back to the market piece. And then I have another follow up question for you. Um, okay. Sort of scaling up that that uh, that cultural idea. So, to Tom, go ahead. Sure. No, no. I was I was gonna say I, m the problem with that is you know Nick, you know we could probably geek out on the marketing part. The, the whole, this whole podcast episode could have been just on the marketing piece of it because I, I essentially you know the the two of us uh, could probably I, I'm sure we're we're gonna we're gonna we'll have some back and forth on that because um, oh. I have my I, I've been in I've been doing this stuff for a long time and I. I think that if I hear the word story one more time, I'm going to smack somebody up upside that. Like, I just, you know, I can't with this, like in this, like the, the idea that, that, that Mark, anyway, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, no, I, I, I welcome all, all feedback and other perspectives. I mean, that, look, a big point of what I'm doing is, and I go to meetups most of the time. It's most of the time it's people who are uh, not millennials or Gen Z. It's people in their late thirties, forties, fifties who, they don't understand the concept the Gen Xers, yeah. Yeah, of talking to some, of not talking to people who disagree with you. It's almost like this thing where you have to agree with someone. It's impolite. It's this, that, like there can't be this conflict. And I would love if my, if my product at some point spurred people to have conversations that were difficult or you disagree with, like there's something to yeah. it. And I, I, tell I, you, think, I think, I think Hassan and I have had conversations about this too, because I think our generation, the Gen X generation is probably the last one that has the philosophy of it's okay to, it's a, it's okay to agree to disagree and still be friends, right? Like it, it's okay to have a difference of opinion, shake hands and be good with each other. Like, yeah, you do not have to be on the same page with some, like, I, I don't understand that either. So if, I hope your app does that, but let, let, let's go back to that for a minute, because I think sure. like, maybe you, maybe you and I should catch up on a separate note and maybe we could just talk shop a little bit. We don't want to, we don't want to, um, you know, bamboozle the, the, the entire podcast about sure. sell, about sales and marketing, uh, which we could easily do. I, I know I could anyway, and hey, will kill me later, but yeah. I, I won't do that. I won't do that. So let's go back to the, so how do people like what, what exactly I'm assuming this is some sort of app, but you're trying to get people in person <clears throat> or, or like, so how does it, how does it actually work? Tell us how the actual logistics, like somebody, because I think it's, I think it's kind of comical, right? That we're going, all right, we well, handle log into this app. We're going to we're going to create a profile on this app, but we're going to meet yeah. in person. Hold on. We're not, we're going to meet in person. I'm getting, I'm getting there because now I'm going to put my parameters in and my profile in and oh, no, we're going to meet in person. Hold on a second. And then <laughs> so totally. how do you, how do you marry this? Like, what does this look like from a user perspective? How do people actually interact with what you're doing? Yeah, no, it's a great question. So when I, I think I had to reconcile a few things in my head with this thing is there's no going away from tech there. There's no going away from tech, but people can, people's behaviors can be influenced. Um, I have a belief that getting people together in person again is good for people. Um, and I had to kind of pull that together with the fact that it's, there's a lot of people who are trying to figure out, sorry, there's a lot of people who figured out getting people together in person. They throw events, they do this, that they have dating, um, speed dating events thing. You know, there's people that make it happen without a whole lot of tech, you know, newsletters, but I want to make this thing scale. I, I want to build a true startup that still leverages tech, 
But the, the pillars of what I'm trying to create, and there's no app just yet, and I'll get to that, but the pillars are the simplicity of using this thing, whatever that prototype is, and, and speed. So, you know, when you're trying to meet up with people, the longer I feel like you have time to kind of wait and meet, um, I think you come up with plans, you back out. The more I think about it, I, you know, we all get social anxiety and we back out of things and that, so that sort of thing. And with meetups, they, they get canceled. People back out or there's not big of a group and they don't, you know, I want this to be a thing where if somebody, and this is the goal right now for, for when we eventually build the, um, a really <laughs> legit MVP, um, the goal is going to be having something that somebody could pick up and once they've, once they've already had their profile, it's going to be able to connect them quickly, look at their schedule and basically say, hey, you've got an hour open today, 2.30, 3.30. Um, Jim is right down the street, ready to meet and chat about this. Uh, you've been wanting to talk about this sort of thing. Let's connect you and you're going to go to Joe's Cafe. So what I want to do in the ultimate scheme of things is to pull together the speed at which the platform can help you find somebody um, and the ease of using it. You know, it's not going to be something where I you know you're kind of comically joking about using tech and it takes, it does take a while. I want to get rid of all that. I want people to use the app very minimally. It's just there to be a conduit to get you to the next person um, and next conversation. So the, you know, the model is not going to be use the app. There's going to be ads on there. There's going to be this and that, like none of that is part of my monetization strategy. Um, I've not even thought too deeply that I just want people to use it. Um, what it is today is simple. And I'm approaching this as a, as you would expect from a first time founder, um, simple, start a very clean MVP. And right now that is just a simple website that I'm sharing out in my social circles. I'm networking with people and sharing the website, but also if people want to check out the site, great, but more or less like I want them to fill out the form if this interests them. So I have a simple website and it's not pretty. Uh, I'll surface it later. Um, it's not pretty by any means, but I'm trying to make it clean language that somebody can understand what they're doing and get to it. Clean copy and just sign up if it interests them. Um, most people, what I've seen is when I network with people, they say, I love this idea. I want to sign up. I want to meet people. And I just give them the form. I say, do you want to, here's the form. It asks, I think seven questions. Once they fill that out, I ask an additional, like, I think seven questions is optional, but the first form really gets you going. So I'm trying to keep it very clean and simple and see how many people that can sign up from that angle without going to complex with this thing. Um, but I will say on the back end, you know, even if I'm bootstrapping and keeping things fairly uh, expense free on my side, I am looking into um, building something that's low code or no code. So I'm playing around with a few, a few different tools right now so that I can build maybe an app um, that people can actually use on their phone and not have to go to desktop or, you know, uh, mobile web to, mm -hmm. to sign up to this thing. Because I think the app situation can be a little bit easier to find, uh, you know, versus me giving somebody my Google sites address. Um, well, and so yeah, I mean, keeping it simple. Well, and to your point, the tech is merely the. Conduit. It's merely the yeah. It's the conduit. Yeah, it's it's, it. yeah. yeah, it's yeah. the it's the it's the boat that gets you to where you want to go. You know, the bus <laughs> right. that takes you there, right? Yeah. Um, versus being the thing in and of itself. Which back to your idea about scale. So this now this now engages with my second follow up question, which is sure. this. Um, <clears throat> both you and Tom are in the Northeast. I am in the American West. Um, for those of us, those of you who are listening internationally, uh, fundamentally the American West is <laughs> regionally is just different than the Northeast. It just is, sure. um, for a whole variety of reasons. Even our major cities in, in the American West are different than those that are in the Northeast, <laughs> um, attitudes of folks, culture, all of that. Um, even yes. our COVID experience <laughs> was radically different than in the Northeast, <laughs> Um, and we're not, we don't have to get into the specific details of that. We all know what we're talking about here. Regardless of what you may think of that, it was radically different. <clears throat> okay. Um, I see your product thinking about, and I've lived in the Northeast. I lived in the Northeast. I lived in the upper Midwest of the United States 25 years. I've shoveled my fair share of snow. 
Um, and now I'm done with that for the rest of my life. It's kind of awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I see the idea that you're promoting and the way in which you're using tech and the zeitgeist you're following working regionally quite well in the American West or the American South. Um, even in some place like Florida, which is technically considered to be on the East Coast, but I mean, really isn't, right? Um, culturally, geographically. When you think about scale, um, I know it's probably way too early to ask you this question, but I'm going to ask it to you anyway. Do you see yourself having those regional shifts as you sort of sort of move in scale, you know, across the country? Or do you want to sort of preserve that more that more northeastern vibe um to what you're doing? That's actually a really interesting question because I, I, I do battle with this in my head. So, you know, for people who know Philadelphia mm -hmm. um, and have lived here or at least spent a lot of time here. Um, I love, by the way, I love that city. I spent a lot of time in Philadelphia, uh, a lot of <laughs> my, time in Philadelphia. My in-laws in -laws used to live in Melbourne. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. So, so the, you know, the, there's certainly a, um, the, the ascribed, uh, northeast kind of toughness to people like in Philadelphia. There's a lot of loving people here. I mean, I think like there's a bad, you know, we get a bad rep and, you know, similar hold to other on. cities, I hold think on, in the northeast. Hold on, Nick, Nick, hold on. What, Boston? This, is, this, this, this podcast is going to be projected outward, right? People are going to listen to this, so be careful here. Yeah, I, I know. I, I, think, I think the entire northeast, and I usually, I usually put Philadelphia – to Boston, like Philadelphia, New York, Boston, we're all basically the same people. Let's be realistic. Yes, yes. So let's not tell the little white lies here. We're all tough. We're, this is a, it is a tough area of the country. Like the Northeast yes. is tough. No, <laughs> I think my point was more, <laughs> no, I agree with you. I think my point was more, uh, I, I think people underestimate how much people are willing to stop and just talk to you, help you find directions. Like people are pretty open. Um, I, I think, that. but there's different little kind of vibes like Boston and Philly are really similar, but in New York, there's such a bustle that people are so just kind of, they've got to get somewhere. And there's a certain like kind of feeling to New York that's different than Boston and Philly um, that I am curious about how something like this could or couldn't take off in New York um, where people, you know, like there's the scale there, but I don't know. I, I've seen other social apps struggle in New York. One of one of which one of which is called um, I think it's called Saturday or something like that. Um, okay. But I think to Hassan's question, the I do struggle with it that something like this would be able to take off in somewhere like Philly, where people in the Northeast like maybe they're a little less likely to want to meet others and i don't know if that's just like me coming from my background that's a little bit there's a tough feeling there's maybe less of a warmth of meeting other people that's kind of in my head that i don't know if it's actually real or not but i think i struggle with that and think about you know why shouldn't i start testing this out in other areas um you know or, or how can i see this growing in california versus Memphis versus Chicago, whatever else it might be. And I think the short of it is I'll cross those bridges when it happens. Um, I, I think I'd love to develop teams of people at some point that are very local. Like I want to develop folks who are their local leaders and they're able to tell me everything they know about a certain geo so that they're the ones who are actually running this kind of, um, you know, this division or regional division, whatever it might be. In Chicago, they know how people like to behave. They know how people like to meet up and get to know each other. Um, and that's very different than Florida, than Sacramento, than um, the reason why I'm starting in Philly is not, you know, it's not nothing crazy. You know, obviously I have a small list of people who are interested. It's nothing crazy. There's not a ton of traction. If somebody's not willing to meet up at a certain time, I'll go out there and meet somebody. Um, I wanna go out and meet and talk to people one of the biggest things people just tell me all the time is talk to your customers um, or potential customers. I don't really know who's going to be a customer, but talk to people, go to coffee shops and just be that guy who walks up to you and just says, Hey, do you got a minute to chat? Like, you know, I think part of it is just the geographic ability for me to get places, but also familiarity. Um, 
And I think I just want to, I think part of me wants to home grow it. I think it's just Philadelphia means a lot to me. I've been here all my life. Um, if I can make it here and make this thing happen, it'll give me a lot more confidence to kind of, um, you know, bring it somewhere else. And I know that sounds like, um, was that the Sinatra line? Yep. Yeah, I was just, yeah, just going to say. Anywhere. I was thinking yeah. the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> you said it, it I saw he's not smiling. I was like, I know what he's actually smiling about. <laughs> um, but, but seriously, that, I mean, like, yeah. So the other, the other part to this too, and I, I didn't think to ask you this earlier, but this is, you're, you're, you're talking about truly like a, an actual social thing, right? Like, cause I, I, I almost always immediately go to like a business to business kind of thing, right? For me, I've, I've been in business to business marketing my entire career, you know, business sales and marketing my entire career. So I was thinking about this going like this to me could be potentially a no brainer in a business to business environment, right? Like yep. it, it literally could be a no brainer. And I'll we'll talk offline about this because I wrote down a, two things in particular that I thought would be appropriate that we, we won't talk about on the podcast because I think they're... Sure. It's a little extra, but uh, as soon as we close out this, I'll, I'll bring them up to you. But the business to business component, if you haven't thought of it yet, we need to talk because I think this could be a really, really cool thing. Now, that being said, let's kind of turn the ship here. Uh, let's write, write the ship, so to speak. <laughs> and uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about, about growth craft, right? Like, so sure. how, why growth craft? Like, how did you get, how did you hear about it? Like, what do you like about it? Tell us, a, give us a little bit of feedback as to, what you enjoy about being part of GrowthCraft and and, uh, and and what what brought you to us. Join the GrowthCraft startup community online via Zoom each first Tuesday of the month at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time for Expert Tuesdays. With Expert Tuesdays, you'll hear from one of our top-notch expert advisors and thought leaders in an informative workshop or presentation focusing on a topic important to emerging and growing companies. From sales and marketing to storytelling and leadership, in this hour-long monthly session, you will be able to connect with the GrowthCraft community, advisors, founders, and others. And you'll learn entrepreneurship skills you can apply to your startup project uh, right now. Check out the links to the GrowthCraft website to join us on Expert Tuesdays in the show notes below the podcast player you're listening to right now. And thanks. Yeah, I mean, I think first and foremost, it's like, it's just purely networking and just being able to talk to people. Like wh who would I be if I'm developing a, uh, a product that's uh, based around networking and just getting to know people if I didn't put myself out there. And I like to, I blessed with, you know, a charm and blessed with uh, people skills, I'm sure. But uh, I like that aspect. And the other piece is being a first time founder. It's, there's definitely a lot of stressors about not knowing what I don't know. Like that is the biggest thing. And, and it's, you don't really encounter that, you know, like I've been in, like I said, I was in marketing for 12 years. I still do it. I still consult on the side, but I think I generally know the gist of everything while, you know, you have to keep up with all the tech out there. It's fine. Things haven't changed in a long time and they change slowly. Um, you know, but but in the startup world, like it's very new to me. Um, my father's an entrepreneur. He owns a small business. Um, but the, the, I couldn't talk to him about any of this. So, so, you know, he'll give me business advice. But when it comes to building tech and understanding how to craft an MVP, how are you building a business plan um, that kind of preps you for um, fundraising? How do you how do you put together a real pitch? Um, and the more I kind of started attending a lot of these meetups, um, I started coming in contact with people who knew GrowthCraft and who knew the name and said, um, I forget who it was. It might have been Jerry um, from Flowell. Is mm -hmm. that yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jerry. Yep. So Jerry, I think he was on a, a Founder Institute call or something like that and shouted out. He said, oh, you should join GrowthCraft. And said just the name and it took me a little bit of uh you know just looking it up but then i'd seen a few people that i actually already recognized in your circle and i think that goes a long way too is once you see people who are already familiar to you in the circle you want to join it's a no-brainer so i see you know folks in there and i go oh well, like i have to join this i i need support in some way and i don't know what that support looks like i don't every day i wake up i'm like i don't know where actually i need 
<laughs> support right now. I have a general list of things that are, you know, bothering me or tripping me up um, or things I'm excited about, but, you know, I need to just continuously chat with people. And I think the fact that GrowthCraft gives me access to um, advisors, um, I could probably nag the two of you when I need to, um, you know, and, and just be able to have a platform for like, there's a lot of stuff people post on there that are interesting takeaways. There's book recommendations. I've been eating up just startup books and, and things like that. Um, just to sponge as much as I can. And I feel like, I don't know, that that's probably the, the two things I could speak to is just wanting to network. The more people I talk to, the, the, you know, the more I learn. Um, and just being a first time founder, like it's scary. Um, but it's scary kind of in a good way. So it's yeah. like, you know, yeah, there's a lot of unknowns, but how can I hear from people who've done this before? And how can I relate to them in a way that kind of makes me less, less stressed, less, uh, <laughs> less worrisome about what's going wrong or, or right. Um, yeah, well, I don't know. Well, you're right. It is. I mean, it is scary at that, at that napkin stage at the beginning stage or, or, or when you finally mm -hmm. leave the napkin and, you know, launch your Google site and now you're starting to put it out in the world, have surveys, um, <clears throat> getting feedback on the product, um, seeing if you have alignment with, um, with what the idea it is that you have in your head versus the reality, you know, outside on the ground. And so, um, no, it's great to hear about growth craft. And honestly, I mean, that's a couple of things that, that you and I talked about, um, yeah. initially when we were, when we were talking about you, uh, you coming in and joining us. Well, um, we've, we've kind of rounded the corner here today. And so we're kind of at our end. I, I, Nick, I'm going to ask you the, the same sort of ending question. Do you have anything to promote today? Where do people check you out? Um, where can people find your your Google site? Where can people get a hold of you um, in regards to your project? Yeah, I mean the the this is probably the Google site. I, I don't know if I should even say this like <laughs> on the air because it's uh it's like these long kind of a uh, that's okay URLs. That's okay. <laughs> but that's okay. You, you can, guys you share it out it. afterwards. <laughs> we, that, we're we're gonna we're gonna put it in the show notes below the player. We'll put all the yeah, links in the show notes. So yeah, we'll go do ahead. that. But I'll say um, find me on LinkedIn because I'm starting to build, um, what I started doing as of this week was I want to start putting content out there that speaks to the values of community cup. So I've started doing that on my LinkedIn. Again, it's Nick Salvatore, um, or you could say Salvatore, Salvatore, it's Italian. Um, Nick Salvatore, find me on LinkedIn. Um, follow me, add me as a connect. Um, I've got some links to community cup on there. Also some calls in case people would just want to chat because I, I'd love to talk to people and get a feeling for um, what they like, dislike about this. How do they engage and network with people? Um, but I'll give you guys the, the, um, the form and the, the Google site as a, you know, for show notes. And I hope that people can click it and sign up. And I know we're in the Philly area, but I would love people to sign up if they're outside of there because we are going to have something that's, you know, hopefully a little bit broader in the future. Um, and yeah, go from there. Awesome. Well, we will have links to Nick Salvatore and to his LinkedIn. Um, we will have links to the Google site for community cup, the, um, the survey, all the questions that you need to fill out. And of course we would encourage you to provide feedback once you click on those links to Nick about community cup. This is a great idea and, uh, we need to get more of this out there, not just in the Philadelphia area. Um, but also nationally, everywhere where you are hearing and listening to the Growth Craft Podcast today. Once again, we'd like to thank Nick Salvatore for coming on the Growth Craft Podcast. And with that, we're out. Thank you, guys. Each second Thursday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Join GrowthCraft live and in person at Second Thursdays at CIC, located at 1 Broadway, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Located at Kendall Square, CIC features the most engaging entrepreneurial community in the Northeast, right next to MIT and minutes from Harvard University and downtown Boston. With 250,000 square feet of professionally managed, flexible workspace, CIC has every office amenity you could possibly need to scale your startup project. 
For those of you who are local, or if you're just visiting Boston, GrowthCraft advisors and founders can meet others in our community face-to-face. -face. Join us for an informal social and informational get-together. Meet others, chat with advisors and peers, make connections, and then stay for Venture Cafe, starting at 4.30 p.m. Eastern every second Thursday at CIC. Check out the links to the GrowthCraft website to join us live and in person at Second Thursdays at CIC in the show notes below the podcast player you're listening to uh, right now. And thanks.